Welcome, everybody. I certainly appreciate you stopping by. It makes what I do worthwhile. <laughs> Honestly, I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot. And today is Wednesday. It is April 10th, which means tomorrow will be in April 11th, Thursday. I've got my live streaming event. You didn't know I had a live streaming event? Lucky you. I do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. When you hear that market bell going off, I'm going on. Me and my co-host, Taylor. We're there for about an hour, hour and a half, closer to an hour and a half, taking requests from investors like you. You got a ticker you want us to look at? Drop it in the comment box. I'll go over the information. Taylor will go over the charts and we'll give you two opinions, whatever that's worth to you. Now, if you have some information, Give me a heads up. Let me know something about that stock so I can focus in on that aspect of it and give you the biggest bang for your buck. Now, I got to be honest with you here. If you drop your ticker during the show, chances are I'll never get a chance to look at it because I announced this video earlier in the day. I put up a placeholder for it so people know to show up. Well, they're dropping their tickers in early and I do go by first come, first serve. So by the time four o'clock rolls around, I put it out around lunchtime. I have my six, seven, eight stocks to look at, and I just don't have time to look at any that were dropped during the show. So I do apologize for that. So if you really want your ticker looked at, get it in the queue early before four o'clock Eastern Standard Time on Thursday, any Thursday. So what I like to do on this show is share my own personal due diligence on a hot penny stock. I am about penny stocks all day long. I trade them, I post news on them, I make videos about them. Who said that? What's a penny stock? <laughs> a penny stock is any stock under five bucks and that's all it takes to qualify. It's about price, not locale. So it doesn't matter where it's at, what market. If it's under five bucks, it's a penny stock. Well, I am constantly looking for stocks that have potential to make us money. And I got one for us today. This is Lease. Ticker LEAS, Strategic Asset Leasings, currently doing business as a new medical inc. She did a reverse merger a while ago, and she just never got the chance to change her name and ticker. And at this point in the game, I think it's probably going to be moot. Now, we did look at this back in August of last year. We talked about most of what we're going to talk about right now, but there are updates and there have been some changes. Look at that screenshot. Well, as you can see, the price is nearly double since the last time we looked at it. But more importantly, we've had some changes over here. Not nice ones either. Back then, we were pink current and we had both of our green ticks, our validated information, verified profile and verified transfer agent. Not anymore. Now we are pink limited, which means we're late on one or more of our financials. We lost our verified profile. We have a red mark and a yellow mark, which are bad, dark and defunct and grace period. And we're going to focus in a little more on that here in a minute. But this is the bitter side. But we've also got a sweet side. She is in the midst of another merger right now. And she has been for a while. When we looked at it in August, we were talking about this merger deal, hoping it would be closing soon. She had jumped into this. I think it was May, but we had a news press come out in June. And the stock jumped. It went up over 700% on this news. They tell us here that A New Medical, an early stage biotechnology company focused on developing disruptive new therapies to treat age related neurodegenerative diseases. No, I'm not making fun of people who have neurodegenerative diseases. I was making fun of me. I'm getting old. I could end up being one of those people which they previously announced has entered into a definitive merger agreement with Redwoods Acquisition Corps, a special purpose acquisition company. What's a special purpose acquisition company? This is a company that's on the major exchange that was created by a group of investors who have no business. They come on the market, they've got no revenues, still have no revenues. They're prospectors. They're looking for a company that wants to get on the major exchange, whether that be a company that's private or on a lower exchange, and they'll become partners with them and they'll invest money into them and they will make money off of them. Now, the way they get their investment to put in 
is by coming to us, the shareholders. They start selling shares in this company they're going to make a deal with. They don't know who it is. We don't know who it is. We have no clue. So they're selling speculative shares, I guess you would say, and SPAC shares go for $10 a share. Now, the company, the SPAC, has a deadline to make a deal. They just can't go on perpetually forever. They have 18 to 24 months to cut a deal, consummate it, and close it. If they don't do that and they fail, guess what happens? They got to give you your money back. Yes, it is a money back guarantee. You just won't ever hear anybody say it that way. But that's really not the reason anybody gets in. So during that entire time, the stock is only worth $10 so that they can return the money at the end in case it fails. Once the deal closes, the stock is live. Now, the stock's value is locked, not the stock. We can bid it up. We can bid it down. But if you bought it at $11, which is what Redwoods is at right now, if they failed, you'd only get $10 for each share. I've seen SPACs down at $4 a share before they closed a deal. If you bought it at $4 and they failed to cut a deal, you'd get $10 for every single share. It's a heck of a strategy to be making money. Most don't play it that way. Now, all that money that's in the bank from all those shares they sold is the investment they're going to give the company they make a deal with. So, Lease would be getting a ton of money from this deal. So, that's basically how a SPAC works. And Redwoods has made a deal with this company and it looks like we're right on the verge of closing. They tell us down here that a new has assembled a portfolio of gene therapies in partnership with leading scientific institutions in the U.S. and Europe. They just got their first core patent on cognition and memory. It was granted and issued both in China and Europe, which is really surprising. China doesn't pay a whole lot of attention to copyrights and patents. Anu has other patents pending issuances in the U.S. and patent applications that have not yet been examined. Now, here we get a lot of details, and there are a lot of details, as you would expect. If you want to go over to the 8K and go through all the fine print details, be my guest. We're going to stick with the generalities here, but you should do your own due diligence, folks. So, they tell us here the pro forma enterprise value of the combined company, both companies together, is $94 million, which includes up to $54 million of cash held in the trust account. I do believe that is for lease. That is for a new. That's the money they'd get when this deal closes. I could be wrong. It could be $40 million, but I think it's $54. Now, there are incentives. Once this company is on the major exchange and doing business, Redwoods has incentive milestones for them. They have uh, an extra 5 million additional earnout shares, and I think there's $60 million of earnout shares or something like that. So we have incentives for the company to do well, and it will help the shareholders down the road. The transaction which has unanimously been approved by the board of directors of Anu and Redwoods. All the management from both companies approved this. Is subject to approval by their respective stockholders. That's it, folks. That's the last thing we're looking for. As I'm going to show you here in a minute. In August, I told you, we will know when the closing is close when you see an S4 filed. Well, they did file that. That's the last piece of the puzzle when it comes to filings. We, the stockholders, now are the last link in the chain. They only need our approval, and I'm presuming we're going to approve it. All the cash remaining on the combined company's balance sheet at the closing of the transaction after the settlement of the transaction-related expenses is expected to be utilized by the combined company for working capital, growth, and other general corporate purposes. A more detailed description of the transaction terms and a copy of the definitive merger agreement will be included in a current report on Form 8K, which is out now, and you can go check it out, or you can tap into their presentation, which is like a brochure, heck of a lot easier to read, as you can see right there. They give you some general information without weighing you down with all the legal jargon. As you can see, it's looking pretty decent. And we're going to get into more details here as we roll along. Now, I was telling you that they had filed their S4. 
They did. That's what we were waiting for back in August. Well, here in February, they filed it. And we get an important piece of information inside this S4. We know the new ticker now. And I could not find this. Somebody brought this up to me on Twitter and their name escapes me. But you know who you are. Thank you, pal. He told me where to find it. You got to appreciate someone who doesn't just tell you it's out there. They actually show you where to go get it. It's here in the S4. The new ticker is going to be W-E-N-A and their warrants, they will have warrants, won't just have a W at the end, it'll have a W-S. So now we know what the new ticker is. The other thing I want to show you, which is very relevant, these three 8Ks right here and these three Form 425s are all about the same thing. I told you the stockholder is the last link in the chain. All they need is for our approval and this deal is moving forward. Well, those filings are about stockholder meetings they keep postponing. Why would you postpone it? Don't you want to get this thing going? Come on. They had one April 1st. They postponed it. They pushed it to March 22nd. I listened to this one. How boring. They read the minutes of adjourning it and postponing it. Now they had one on April 8th, which was just two days ago. This is strictly for, this document relates to the proposed transaction between Redwoods and Anu. That's what the vote is for. We're just voting on it to approve it. I could not find any information out there any which way. Nothing. No videos, no podcasts, no press releases, no filings, nothing. Which isn't all bad. First off, I am presuming it got approved. So we haven't been told yet, which means that's a coming catalyst if it's approved, right? This is all good news. That's what we're looking at right now. This merger being completed. Now we're going to get back to this a little bit, but let's take a look at the sour side of all of this. Lease right now is at 007. She had a pretty decent day. Actually, she went up 6%. Now I told you she's pink limited. This means that she is behind on her financials. Could be one, could be more than one. Well, I went diving through here and I found what she's missing. She is missing her annual report. That should have been out uh, just a few weeks ago, which is no big deal. You wouldn't get a pink limited for being a few weeks late, but they've got more. I noticed she is missing the first quarter for 2022 and the first quarter for 2021. I don't know why, but I do know you have to have them and they don't have them. So what has occurred now is that they have been late for so long, they have been given an ultimatum, a deadline. And that's what grace period is all about. They have been given a 15 day countdown before they are yanked off of the OTC market and thrown down onto the expert market. Now the expert isn't a delisting, it's a penalty box. It's a timeout. They get thrown down there and their stock cannot be bought or sold until they come out. Now, if you're invested in them, your money's locked up too. You're down there with them. Now, the truth of the matter is you can sell. You actually can sell. You just can't buy. But nobody wants to sell. For some reason, when stocks go to the expert market, they're being bought and sold by marketers and brokers who are shredding the price. The price goes down to four zeros, five zeros before the digit. It is just ridiculous and nobody wants to sell for that. So you're trapped while they're down there. And the only way they come out is to get their financials caught up. Well, I'm going to be honest here. I don't think they're going to get their financials caught up. But before I get ahead of myself, where's the date? How do we know when that 15 days is up? That's the most important piece of information. They should put it right there. Well, they do give it to us. It's over here under quote. If you scroll down to proprietary quote eligibility. It's right there, folks. Grace period. Yes. The last day of the grace period is April 18th. We got eight days before this company goes down to the expert market. Now they won't go down if they get their financials caught up. It'll be done and over with and nobody will talk about it. But I don't think they're going to do it. I don't think they're going to get caught up and I think they're going to go to the expert market. Now, that is bad news and I expect the stock to fall, but that doesn't always happen on bad news. We get a lot of stocks with dark catalysts. 
They announced they're going bankrupt or being kicked off the major exchange to the OTC, doing a reverse split, going to the expert market. And for some silly reason, like the last act of vengeance or something, the stock skyrockets. <laughs> Big, strong surge. Of course, it comes crashing back down to earth, but we see that a lot. While I'm not expecting that, I never am. So what I'm thinking here, follow me. If this is bad news for the company and she's got eight days left and you're going to be trapped if you're invested in this company when she goes on to the expert market, a lot of people may start to evacuate, may start to sell their shares because they don't want to get trapped on the expert market with that investment and the price will start to fall. Well, if you're looking for a stronger hold before the merger closes, now would be a good time to take advantage of the dip and buy down at the bottom, wherever that's going to be before the merger. Now there's probably going to be some sort of transition from the stock here to the stock there. And I'm going to talk about that when we look at the stock for this company. So that's what we got going on here. You've got a deadline here of eight days that they're going to go down to the expert market. Now, what I'm thinking is that they may have some saving grace here. The market gods may reach down once this merger closes and grab up lease a new, pull them out of the expert market through the OTC market and drop them right on the NASDAQ. Wow. Wouldn't that be a nice cure to a big problem? Now that doesn't mean they don't have to catch up their financials. doesn't matter what market you're on. You always have to have all your financials. So I don't know how that part's going to play out. Matter of fact, I don't know how any of this is going to play out. I'm just speculating. So what was the relative volume around lease today? Are people evacuating? Well, the price is going up, so I wouldn't think so, but the volume's going down. We lost mm, close to 50% of our volume, dropping from 6.5 million down to 3.9 million. Share structure for the company. All right, this is the way it stands right now. Our outstanding share count is just over a billion. Insider zone about five and a half million, giving us all the rest, which is over a billion. But this is going to change. A new has got to take all of her shares, 1 billion, and put them into this new company up on the NASDAQ. Well, you know how many shares they got? 6 million. So we've got to get 1 billion shares from all of us stockholders into those 6 million shares. Well, the way I figure it, if you divide 6 million into 1 billion, it comes out to 116. Now, I'm just doing basic math here, but it would seem to me if you want to get all the shares in this arc into that speedboat, we're going to have to do at least a 116 reverse split. It really isn't, but it is. But you're going to be getting stock worth a heck of a lot more. We're down here at 007. And right now, if you take a look at Redwood, Redwood is at, where's Redwood? There it is, $11. Now we're at 007 to $11. If my math is correct, we're looking at 140,000% increase in price. So there may be a whole different calculation for figuring out the share exchange from where we're at to where we got to go. But we know it's going to happen, but we are stepping up to a better market where more people are going to see the stock and it probably should start growing. However, I will say this in complete honesty. When I see these SPAC deals first announced, the first hearing, Virgin, the stock runs hard, 700%. Then you hear of news that they signed a letter of intent. That's exciting too, but you don't get as much as the first run, maybe half if you're lucky. Then sometime down the road, they finally close the deal. Woohoo! What everybody's been waiting for. And what normally happens is it dumps. I mean, hard. You see maybe a pop the first day. And then after that, it tumbles. We pray that doesn't happen here. So going back to our lease, let's check out our disclosures here. Don't have anything since 2022. All the disclosures have been over there with reds. So let's take a look at the news. I only want to look at one piece of news because it's really old. Matter of fact, all the news is old. Our most current piece comes from June of 2023, that one I shared with you about the merger. That was their last piece of news. There's no other news here. 
But I want to share an even older piece with you because it is relevant and important. This one came out in December of 2022. A New Medical receives notification of issuance of Alzheimer's gene therapy patent and claims by European Patent Organization. Now, the reason we're reading this very old news is because it's very current. It's only got 18 years left, so why shouldn't we look at it? The patent provides 20 years of patent protection for several a new medical product candidates from competition in diseases such as Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, Huntington's disease, Lou Gehrig's disease, dementia, Lou bodies, and a whole bunch more here. So a patent is very important because one, it is a firewall. It protects your knowledge, your technology, your innovations from being copied and used by anybody else. But others can still use it because this is also an asset. You can license it out to other companies who need it and want to use it. And you can make royalties off of that. And lots of companies make huge money just off of their royalties. Now, that's really all the news we've got, folks. We have a merger that looks like it's ready to close, but we haven't seen the final results of the vote. Did they even take a vote? Or did they push the vote again to another date? We don't know. This is a vital piece of information. In the meantime, Lisa's falling down to the expert market. She's got eight days before she goes down there. Is the price going to surge as a dark catalyst, people wanting to get in? Whether she goes to the expert market or not, it's the last chance to buy before she goes up to the NASDAQ. Or are people going to be unaware of exactly what's going on and just be scared and just want to evacuate this company and the price is going to fall and you can get it at a lot cheaper price? I don't know, folks. I'm just giving you information to think about. All right, let's go take a look at this chart. And this is going to be a virgin viewing for me. Believe it or not, I have not looked at the chart. Ah, so that's what she looks like. Actually, I did see this chart earlier today. I ran over here just to see how she responded to the news on June 6th about that merger, but I didn't study the chart. It's looking pretty good. Looks like it has a lot of heat, actually. So we're looking at strategic assets, ticker L-E-A-S, doing business as a new medical. Now we're over here at my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. And I've got it opened up to a one-day, one-year chart. Now, we've had a lot of volatility, and we've had a lot of low. Back on April 27th, a year ago, we were at a low of 0003. June 6th, the news came out about the merger, and she exploded. She went from 0006 up to 0048. 700% run right there. Came back down and bounced firmly on our 50-day SMA, jumped again, setting a new high here at about 006. Came back down, hovered over the 200 for a while, argued with the 200 for a while, and then dipped. Now, to me, this looks more like a crouch. You know how a cat crouches just a few inches down to jump many feet up? Well, isn't that what it looks like? The cat crouched and then pounced. That's huge. We went from 0011 up to 0081, between six and 700% gains right there, folks. Then she came all the way back down. Huge fall. That's like over 50%. But look where she hit. It's important to take notice. Right on the 50, like she did here. So when she has these big runs, she likes to bounce off of the 50, which is exactly what she did here. And when you take a closer look, you can see these wicks are just coming through the 20. All the solid bars are sitting on top of the 20, and she is actually still climbing right now. These wicks tell us there's a lot of volatility going on. Let's take a look at our six-month, four-hour view. So our low bubble on our six-month chart is here at 0009. This is our crouch before the pounce. And as you can see, she is taking these drops, but even here, she is sitting on top of the 50-day SMA, and it looks like she's starting to climb. Nobody <laughs> evacuating yet. But again, we already noticed that the volume has been decreasing, and it's getting a lot less. Osculators are actually strong. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, is climbing. You read this the same way you read the MACD. You want the blue line on top of the other line. We just had a crossover on our MACD. It's climbing, and we are now getting our green bars. That's positive. 
and our RSI is up at 58. This isn't actually looking bad. And look at that. Our 200-day SMA is on an uptrend right now. Taking a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. So she had a climb. She was floating on this 50-day SMA. And when she broke it, she broke it hard. Came all the way down through the 200 and then bounced right back up. Now, I think that's going to happen more often than not. When I see a strong running price and then all of a sudden this huge dip and the wick, I'm primarily talking about the wick, goes through a strong SMA, primarily 200, and comes all the way down here. I expect a lot of these, since it's only the wick and not the solid bar, to jump right back up. Well, this came all the way down here to 004, and it bounced up to 007. Well, gee whiz, that's about 80% gains right there if you'd have caught that. When she finally lost her bearing, she came down and look, she is sitting firmly on our 200 day SMA and now she's starting to climb. And our 200 haul is starting to come up as well. 200 haul is like your 200 day SMA. Both have the same authority on the board, but penny stocks really respect that 200 haul. Osculators, not looking bad, but they show a little bit of cool off with that last bar, but there's still strength on the board. Taking a look at our five day, five minute, what's going to happen? We've got eight days before she's probably going to end up on the expert market. Well, she's had a breakout here, right? She was underneath our 200. She was poking it, banging her head on it, had a nice strong push through, came back down to where she started. She fell no lower than where this run started from. That to me tells me it is looking for an opportunity to run. When is an opportunity? Well, a news press doesn't hurt. A good filing doesn't hurt. But what I'm primarily talking about is the 200-day SMA going flat. Once that 200-day goes flat, it is a perfect opportunity for the price to jump up there, bounce around, and then take off. She got up here, bounced around, and took off. Here's another solid hit onto the 200 with a very long wick going down, telling me it wants to climb. These wicks underneath the 200 with the solid bar above it normally tell me I'm gonna pop and I'm gonna climb. She did, she popped right back up. That would have been another good gain and she's been climbing. Now again, she's come back down to the 50. She's dipping underneath it right now. Now this doesn't look exactly normal. We haven't got a real long wick. She could be turning now. Looking at our oscillators, our PPO is coming down. Looks like we have a negative crossover in store. Our MACD has already had a negative crossover. It's about ready to cross the signal line. However, I see the pressure starting to ease off of this push down. And our RSI is pretty cool. It's down there at 47. I don't like to see it any less than 55. So, <laughs> we normally aren't hoping for this, but we're looking for the stock to fall. That's what I'm thinking. We want this price to come down so that we can scoop up some really cheap shares before they do this reverse split and we end up with a smaller pile that's worth a lot more. I'm not saying it's going to be worth more in the fact that you paid this much and they're going to give you free money, but we're getting more valuable stock on a more valuable market in business and ready to run. So there's a lot going on with this company, bad and good, and they're colliding right now. Now is the time to watch it. But of course, folks, there is a lot more due diligence. I did not cover hardly anything about the drugs or the gene therapy that this company is involved with. Now, there wasn't any news presses, but there is information out there. And I would highly suggest that you go looking at it. That is what you're investing in, what the company does. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.